Earlier last year, Mali commanded the immediate departure of the UN peacekeeping mission in order to emancipate the country from any Western military presence. So, what became of the numerous UN peacekeepers who were instructed to depart the nation? Well, these UN peacekeepers chose to defy these orders and remained in Mali despite the vote. In response, Colonel Asimi Goita utilized his authority to ensure the complete withdrawal of all UN troops. Astonishingly, the most recent reports confirm the official completion of the UN peacekeeping mission's withdrawal. However, this revelation has exposed the true extent of their presence in Mali, far surpassing previous estimations. So, what actions did Mali take against the UN peacekeepers that garnered attention? Let us delve into this account of Mali's exertion of power over Western nations and the United Nations by exploring how this series of events unfolded. In Mali, a demonstration took place at the Palais des Sports Arena, organized by the M5 RFP party and various civil society groups. The protesters voiced their discontent and held signs, demanding the withdrawal of the UN mission. Leading the rally were supporters of the transitional military government. According to one protester, the UN mission was perceived as an ineffective and malevolent force that needed to leave the country. Despite initial optimism about the arrival of the UN peacekeeping force, many Malians viewed the UN soldiers as part of the problem rather than the solution. Criticisms of the mission include its failure to protect the population and its perceived inaction during massacres near UN compounds. MINUSMA, established in 2013 to aid foreign and local troops against armed groups associated with ISIS and Al-Qaeda, has now become the largest, most expensive and deadliest UN mission in history, with over 14,000 troops on the ground. Although millions of Malians in regions with limited government presence still rely on the UN mission for security, recent tensions between the Malian military government and MINUSMA have escalated. This tension is partially attributed to Mali seeking assistance from the Wagner Group, a private Russian mercenary firm connected to the Kremlin. During the protest, demonstrators could be seen waving Russian flags. Mohamed Kasum Jire, the president of Sentinels Malikura, expressed his belief that MINUSMA should leave Mali due to the lack of results achieved in the past decade. He criticized MINUSMA for undermining the credibility of the Malian army instead of collaborating with the government and the people of Mali, who view the army as a symbol of national unity. Jirai referred to a UN report that accused the Malian army and its Russian counterparts of executing over 500 civilians in Mora village during a March 2022 operation. He defended this action, claiming that Mora had become a safe haven for terrorists. Overall, relations between Europe and Mali have worsened since the 2020 military coup, especially after the government enlisted the support of the Wagner Group in the fight against rebels. This decision led France to withdraw its troops from Mali in 2022, ending almost a decade of involvement. The Mali government consistently asserts that Russian forces in the country are not mercenaries, but rather trainers, assisting local troops with equipment acquired from Moscow. Upon the signing of the peace accord, the narrative swiftly shifted, asserting that their purpose was not to end the war, but to safeguard the peace. However, peace remains elusive. It begs the question, did the public solely desire the departure of UN peacekeepers? The die had been cast, and the military junta held a firm grasp on the public's pulse. Mali officially implored the United Nations to expeditiously withdraw its peacekeeping mission, MINUSMA, from the nation, criticizing its inability to effectively address security challenges. After a decade, instead of making progress, the violence and insecurity that the mission aimed to tackle in the country had actually gotten worse. This deteriorating situation had caused a loss of trust among the people of Mali, leading to protests demanding the departure of UN peacekeepers. So, how did the UN respond to all of this? 
Despite the conclusion of Minusma's mission, the UN will continue to maintain its presence in Mali. Minusma Chief Mr. Wayne confirmed that UN funds, agencies and programs were established in Mali prior to the deployment of Minusma and will remain in the country even after the withdrawal. This aligns with Goita's future plan to eliminate all UN organizations in Mali, aiming to rid the nation of external influence. The focus will now shift towards the entire UN system, including the 21 agencies, funds, and programs of the country team in Mali, in collaboration with the UN Office for West Africa and the Sahel, and the Special Coordinator for Development in the Sahel. However, the UN troops' departure from two bases in northern Mali was executed in a manner that was difficult to comprehend. Consequently, the UN's peacekeeping mission had no choice but to conclude its 10-year deployment in Mali. On December 31st, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres declared the successful fulfillment of MINUSMA's planned retreat. So, what recent event has made headlines? Well, as of now, the United Nations peacekeeping mission in Mali has completed its departure from the country as of Sunday, December 31st, 2023. Consequently, there are currently no UN troops visibly present on Malian soil. Security experts warn that the region may become a center of conflict in the north, as rebel factions and the military vie for control over the areas left unoccupied by the UN, potentially exacerbating the instability in Mali. The UN has stated that only a small team will remain to oversee the transportation of assets and the disposal of UN-owned equipment. Now, another question lingers. But what prompted Mali to expel the UN peacekeepers in the first place? Let's discuss. In 2012, certain regions of the desert north experienced a surge in militant activity despite initial attempts by French forces to contain them. The reasons behind their resurgence remain a mystery. The United Nations launched attacks against these militants, which eventually spread to neighboring Niger and Burkina Faso. This led to a significant rise in casualties and one of the most rapidly escalating humanitarian crises in the world. Unfortunately, the UN mission in this region saw the highest number of peacekeeper fatalities among ongoing UN missions with approximately 170 lives lost. Consequently, the demand for UN troops grew, although it is unclear whether this increase was artificially manipulated. Assigned with the responsibility of safeguarding major cities, mediating conflicts to mitigate ethnic tensions in rural areas, and facilitating medical evacuations for Mali's ill-equipped army, Minusma also played a crucial role in coordinating peace talks between rival armed groups in the north. These negotiations were a result of the Algiers Accords, a peace agreement established in 2015. Additionally, Minus Ma was actively involved in organizing elections scheduled for the following year. However, the relationship between Minus Ma and Mali's leaders deteriorated after the government consolidated power through coups in 2020 and 2021. While Bamako sought a more proactive combat role for Minus Ma, the UN aimed for greater freedom of movement. Tensions further escalated when Mali's government expressed anger towards a UN report in May, which accused the army and armed individuals of causing the deaths of 500 civilians in the town of Moura the previous year. Minusma, which was expected to extend its mandate, was abruptly instructed to leave Mali by Foreign Minister Abdoulaye Diop. This decision raised concerns among security experts who fear that the sudden withdrawal will escalate chaos in the country. With the absence of Minus Ma, the Malian army will face the daunting task of confronting militants alongside approximately 1,000 Wagner fighters. The vulnerability of major towns to attacks may increase as a result. The signatories of the Algiers Accord are also worried about its potential collapse without UN mediation, which could create a conducive environment for another uprising in the north. Despite the presence of UN peacekeepers and French troops leading counter-terror efforts, 
Mali has witnessed a surge in terror attacks and an increase in the number of Malians joining insurgent groups. This raises questions about the effectiveness of the UN mission in addressing the insurgency or whether it intentionally maintained conflicts to legitimize its presence. Criticisms from countries like Russia and China at the UN and the refusal of countries like the UK and Sweden to contribute troops further underscore the challenges faced by the mission. With the departure of the UN troops, Mali's next move is now in question. It is possible that Colonel Goita, who now holds power, may seek assistance from the Wagner Group as a means to enhance military cooperation with Russia. In essence, experts believe that Mali expelled the UN troops in order to rid itself of the controlling influence of a force that answered to the Western-led UN. The Wagner Group has the potential to exert control in a manner distinct from the previous approach. Rather than solely safeguarding Western interests, they can collaborate closely with the Malian military, providing enhanced training and effectively putting an end to the long-standing terrorism plaguing the nation. Experts posit that the departure of UN troops may lead to a decrease in insurgent activities. This belief stems from the absence of a conflicting party akin to the UN troops, whose interests are intertwined with conflicts. Consequently, there is a likelihood that insurgencies will gradually dissipate. What are your thoughts on Mali's decision to request the withdrawal of UN peacekeepers? Do you perceive the UN troops as true peacekeepers or merely Western forces in disguise? We invite you to share your opinions in the comments section below and don't forget to explore these other captivating videos about Africa displayed on your screen. They offer valuable insights into the continent's current affairs. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for more engaging content. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.